Hello and welcome along to our weekly boxing chat on Sky Sports News. I'm Anna Walhouse and I'm joined by Gary Logan, plus a fighter who's on the brink of a big domestic clash. It is Joshua Boazzi. Joshua, good to see you. Before, though, we get st stuck in, we have some breaking news to announce. Dan Aziz, he signed his side of the contract to face you last week. And we understand, don't we, Gary? You're very happy to sign your part of the deal today. Yep, um, it's in front of me, like you said. <laughs> Pen to paper. Yeah, the fight has been agreed. Dan has done his part, so um, I can only do my part. And um, we look forward to the big fight, the big domestic clash um, in October, hopefully. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel to be, to be signing the contract? It's a huge, huge South London showdown, isn't it, coming to Sky Sports? Yeah, no, it is. And I'm... Um, uh, good platform to have it on. Um, of course, someone I'm very familiar with, but um, we understand what's at stake. And, um, you know, it's a final eliminator for a world title, which is what we want to win. You know, um, so for 12 rounds or less, we can put aside and we can make it happen. Gary, I know this is a fight. You're, you're salivating for this one, aren't you? There's a lot to look forward to. Yeah, hashtag salivating. Um, just... You know, I, I did a tweet earlier on in the year just hoping that all of the best, the best that Britain has got to offer will fight over their careers and not, you know, sort of like, not avoid each other, but just not have, for the fights not to happen. The two guys are on boxer. That's why this fight makes so much sense. It's a world title eliminator, a final world title eliminator. Josh has been in a lot of them, so he's tired of them now. This is the final one. This is a, the one, the battle for the mandatory slot, which is like virtually all the marbles other than winning the title, you know, and against a Dan who's on a run of form. Yeah, he's got a lot of momentum behind yeah. him, hasn't he, at the moment. But you two, you and Dan, you know each other very well, don't you? You've known each other for years, sparred hundreds, yeah. hundreds of rounds together, haven't you? Is that friendship, though, going to be put to one side, I guess, now, now you sign that contract? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we know how Dan fights. Um, he's going to be there to win, and um, there's a... There's an approach he has, and um, I've got that approach too. So, I mean, friends or no friends, someone coming to do that to me on Sky Sports, what can I do? I've got to fight back, I've got to show up, you know. So, um, yeah, it's something I'm looking forward to. Like I said, you, you have sparred so many rounds together. Are you, are you seeing that as a good thing, as a positive, or, or could it be a negative? Um, for now, it becomes irrelevant or something that I couldn't care less about. Of course, in our subconscious, we know how that sparring went. I know what to do, what to remember, what um, I need to work on based on that. But the beauty of it now is that we've got different trainers. Um, we've, I would say we've both actually improved. So it will be good to see how that unfolds over 12 rounds. You know exactly what you're going to get, don't you, in terms of, of Dan Aziz. What kind of fight are you expecting? Are the styles, they're going to blend beautifully in this one, aren't they? They should do. Yeah, well, you know, realistically, Dan... Dan's a clever pressure fighter. He can't he can't go into this fight wanting to box laterally. He can't be like Roy Jones Jr. or whatever. He's got to be he's got to be cleverly cleverly pressuring Joshua, and he's going to have to do it with that sort of head you know bob and weave sort of style that he uses that sort of Marvin Hagler in sort of inspired style yeah. where he shifts stance with a right hook. Um, but this this is nothing that I don't think Joshua hasn't seen in their spars. But obviously, you know, Buddy McGirt now working with Dan's going to give him another little tune-up. He's going to give him other little attributes that he thinks can win this fight. And obviously, Virgil's going to do the same. Well, we, we know Dan's got the power, don't we? But do you think Josh is right? That, that could be the difference between the two, do you think? Dan's got the power. Where are you going with it? Um, I'm not too sure, you know. Um, I, think John, I think Josh Five carries... Five knockouts in his last seven. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, you know, he's on a, he's on a momentum. Um, he's not a one-punch hitter. He's a solid hitter. I think he's a solid, sharp hitter. Um, Josh, pretty much the same, but I just think Josh has got a little bit more spite on his shots. But, you know, Dan would be hoping to prove me wrong. And the thing that Dan is so good at, and what he's been very good at, is that the right styles to fight against lately. They've all been tall, stand-up, straight guys who don't like punching down. They like punching at the same height. And Dan's taken full advantage of that because quality fighters that can punch up really do excel at that. You know, and I think that's um, that's played into Dan's hand. This one's going to be the style-wise. Um, it's not the it's not the matchup that everybody thinks it's going to be so beneficial to Dan, and that's why I think um, Josh wins. Joshua, how do you think you've changed under Virgil Hunter? What have you learned? Um, I think it's more of a mindset, you know, um, with training, and while I'm in that ring as well. 
Um, it'll be interesting, you know. I, I know what Dan is going to bring, or what he may try to bring. What do you think he's going to bring? I mean, we know he's a pressure fighter. He may come out and box for a bit, revert back to what he does, or he may come back, start off doing what he does and just be better at it, you know. But um, whether it's at like long range, short range, mid range, I will prepare for any type, all angles, you know. I, I, I'm not focusing on one type of style, you know, I'm, I'm preparing for everything. So um, the bottom line, when it's all said and done, like my boy said to me when we walked in, we have to do is win, and that's what it is. You're just viewing it as you just got to get the win, not giving us any, any prediction. Mm. He's not giving anything away, is he, Gary, just yet? He's not, but, I, you know, there's so many things that, you know, I'm sitting there thinking there's so many different scenarios in a fight. Dan's got a very underestimated jab, very underrated jab, and um, he'll be using that as well as all his, his vast repertoire that he's... He's kept on improving, so it, it, with that in mind, it just makes for such a tantalising fight as to who can be successful. I who, who is going to be successful? I ultimately eyes, think, yeah, exactly. I ultimately think Joshua, but I just think I feel that you know Josh has got to be really. This is going to have to be 105 percent Josh. There can be no drop off. Okay, let's move to the rest of the boxing news, and uh, this one's made Gary rather. Tetchy today, shall we say? The news that uh, Tyson Fury is going to face Francis Ngani. I'll come to you in just a sec. Okay. But would would you would you take a, a crossover fight, Joshua, for, for, for I guess the right amount of money? Everyone would, and I don't let any fighter sit it's here and tell you they would. Yeah. yeah, everyone would. <laughs> you know, I, and and I said previously, I think the questioning comes as you know, should a boxing title be on the line? If it were just a fight outside boxing, well, with a title at stake, then cool. But because a title was on the line. All the other com all the other contenders now raise questions. You know why are they not fighting for it? But every fighter, and I'll tell you straight, would do it. Don't let anyone sit in this chair and say they wouldn't. I complete. I can completely concur. I completely concur. That's not my beef. I'm a traditionalist. I know. Maybe it's my age. I was raised in the era of Muhammad Ali. Now everybody says, "Ah, oh, but Muhammad Ali fought Inoki." Muhammad Ali's title wasn't on the line. That was just a one-off, mm. you know, one-off fight with no titles on the line. It was just a crossover, see if my boxing can beat your um, floor work. And this, he's now defending his WBC title. There's 15 other ranked world contenders. That so paid, your, your issues at the titles? Then. That's my issue. You know, you have not mandatorily defended your title in 20, nearly, it will be nearly the better part of 22 months. How does that work? How does that work? You know, the only thing is, you know why it works, because it's about money, and I understand that, and I would take that money, but I wouldn't be taking my title with it. I would say, you know what, if the WBC say to me, you can't do this and have our title on the line, I say, fine, the title's not on the line. They say, no, 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 we want it defending mandatorily. I say, you know what, keep your title, because I'll make this bag of money. I under and they would say, yeah, we understand. And I'm Tyson Fury. I can come back for that title. I can come back and fight. There's no way they're not going to let him fight for it. But to hold it on ice when right now you've been, for the better part of a year and a half, he's been, yeah, big things announced. Another thing, big thing announced. Another thing, and now we're getting Francis Nagano. I'm not feeling it. I'm In a nutshell, Gary's not going to be watching. That's all no, we need to be saying no, on not. that one. No, I'm not. Um, Chris Eubank Jr. on his Twitter pretty much looks like that rematch with Liam Smith's going to be happening. September the 2nd is the muted date. What difference can Chris make second time around? Can he make any differences, do you think? The old Eubank. For me, it's very simple, the old Eubank. Um, the ferociousness, the punches and bunches, everything. I, I, I genuinely prefer the old Eubank. But of course, Smith has been in there with him now. And Smith is a very, very dangerous pressure fighter. Very, very dangerous pressure fighter. We saw in the last fight what he did. Um, but I think for Eubank to have more of a chance, it's going to be the old Eubank. Is that what we need to see? Yeah, because as you can see here, right, Chris is not a counter-puncher. He slips, but he doesn't counter-punch it. So when Liam gave him a couple of, couple of opportunities with a jab, then when you're a counter-puncher, when someone throws a jab and they're falling short, you're supposed to make him pay. But because Chris is trying to do this whole boxing lark, he, he, it's not him, <laughs> you know? And look at him here. He's jumping up far too quick. Instead of taking his eight, staggering all over the ring, giving a referee not much of a choice... He's not giving himself a chance to actually win this fight or survive this round even, you know, and we saw it here. Um, you know, Josh is totally right. Um, we, we need to see the old Chris Eubank Jr. for him to be successful in this fight, that drum roll type of fighter. I've seen him do things in sparring to bigger guys that you wouldn't believe. If I told you their names, you'd be like, really? 
and he, he has had that ability. But the, what he's doing now, this whole lateral Roy Jones Jr. influence style is just not working for him. Well, time will tell, won't it? Yeah. Hopefully September the 2nd for that one. Well, this weekend, live action from across the Atlantic as George Cambosis Jr. faces Yorkshire's Maxi Hughes as in the early hours of Sunday morning on Sky Sports main event. Is there a possibility, Gary, that Cambosis could en underestimate Maxi Hughes, do you think? Yeah, definitely. You know, definitely. I don't think he will, but there is a possibility. You know, I mean, listen... You've been world champion before. Once you've been a world champion before, you've either got one, you've either got the desire to win it again and go all out to win it again, or that will be will have been hindered. And uh, if he hasn't, then uh, you know Maxi might run at Maxi might eke out another win. What are you expecting from this one? Are we going to see fireworks? Do you think on on Sunday morning? Yeah, I think um, Burgess wants to obviously get back in the mix, um, being undisputed world champion before. Um, you'd think so. The fight is not in Australia, but it's somewhere in the States. But I'm sure, I, I think, um, yeah, he's been undisputed champion before. He lost it. He lost to Haney twice, but he definitely would want to get back in the mix. Looking forward to that one. Set your alarm, mm. grab your coffee for that one. It is going to be a great fight. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Josh, for your time this week. Before we go, though, uh, we do have to draw your attention to an absolutely brilliant documentary on Sky Documentaries, that The Right to Fight, which is available now. It tells the most amazing story of some trailblazing fighters, female fighters from the 1970s. It really is do not miss action. Boxing was a man's sport. Nobody in the whole United States wanted women in the ring, period. Most of my fight was outside of the ring. We were challenging the norm. Ah, you guys are not gonna stop me. They gave us our license. The little piece of paper that we had fought so hard for. We had the same goal in life, to be taken seriously. I wanted to be part of history. Damn! We were the spark that started a fire that's burning brightly today.